It's 17 minutes past 11. Let's talk to what a good name you have for this subject, David Goodfellow. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Oh, you sound like Mr Happy. <laughs> oh, I'm actually a bit under the weather today, but happy to be speaking to you. Now, is it? do you think that if you have a name like Goodfellow, you become your name? I don't know. There's some people think that, but I'm not sure. Is I've that a got... serious question, Harry? <laughs> 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 She's just had a I cup of coffee, the... David. Sorry about that. <laughs> Right on, on the broader question. I'm called Rogers. My <laughs> second question is, what's your favourite colour? <laughs> oh gosh, probably blues or something like that. <laughs> so you set up, you've organised the Everyday Kindness Awards. Well, actually, I'm, I'm part of a group called the Kindness Offensive, uh, which is a London-based group with, like, say, 90% Londoners, and we're actually the largest kindness theme group in the world. So maybe that says something for London. And the largest uh, kindness-themed group in the world. That's right, yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, like I said, most of us are Londoners who do it. So I, I think that probably says something about London right there. And we do lots of different things. Um, recently, we did a toy for every single child in hospital across London and all the orphanages. But I think the event that you guys are most interested in, in this context is the thing we did called the Everyday Kindness Awards. Yes. Uh, and we had actors um, struggling on the street, some with a pram up some stairs, some with uh, needing directions. One person kept on dropping their luggage and all their papers flew everywhere. And um, public didn't know that there were actors doing this. And we'd wait until someone intervened and helped, much like you guys on the street were saying that they'd done themselves recently. And when they do, we jump out from behind pillar boxes and lampposts and sing for he's a jolly good fellow and give a medal made by the same people who make the Olympic medals and a bottle of champagne and a bunch of flowers. Goodness and me. We, we do this to celebrate the fact that these everyday actors acts of kindness really are what make the wheels turn in London and um, they are great great things that should be celebrated and we should be encouraging children to do them and also encouraging one another to recognize that they are really lovely lovely things that don't take a lot of energy and make a massive difference to the person being helped. Hmm. Uh, do you think London is a kind place though David? Um, I mean you just got to travel across the city in rush hour uh, you don't see much <laughs> kindness. Rush hour doesn't bring the best out in anybody. I, I tend to think that broad generalizations about people, be it you know, from a certain geographical region or a certain race or anything like that, tend to come up wanting. It's my experience that people in general, wherever they may come from, are nice. And we all have good days and bad days, and sometimes we can be mean and unkind, and sometimes we could be noble and great. But it's more of a person, a people thing than it is a London thing. But as it goes, I'm a Londoner. I was born in London. I lived most of my life in London. And I find Londoners to be exceptionally kind. Um, when I need help, I tend to ask people. Um, and I tend to get help. And with the Everyday Kindness Awards, we spent three days out in the streets setting up these, um, these people, the lost tourists and the struggling mother. Yes. And it never took more than five minutes for someone to intervene and help out. And where did you go? Is, you know, where's better? You know, Chris is from South London, I'm North London. Are North <laughs> Londoners kinder? No, South London is much kinder. <laughs> oh, I, I think we need to, to rise above this whole geographical region. No, I don't think so. <laughs> I, I do, I do. I think all pe I think if you start to think that one group is kinder or potentially kinder than another, that's the kind of foothold into some unhealthy thinking. But surely, think there's, surely there is differences, uh, and, and let's be serious now, we're just having a bit of fun, um, but uh, <laughs> let, let's be serious, is there differences in age groups and generations when it comes to kindness, do you think? Uh, I don't know. I think there might be differences in how much moaning people do about kindness, depending on their age. But I noticed during the Everyday Kindness Awards, there wasn't a set demographic. We had teenagers jumping in. We had old folk jumping in to help, even on things where you thought, oh, will they manage to carry that pram up those stairs? But they were still jumping in. So I think it depends on, if, if, you, if I think about myself, there are days when I feel very helpful and very kind, and other days where I'm in a great rush like yes, everyone else. Yes, it depends exactly around. what you've got going on, I, I suppose. I, I think it varies, yes. Yeah. So I think, you know, my, my thoughts on it are that everybody has the capacity to be kind, and uh, we should be looking to everyone to display these attributes and realise that most people do, given the chance. And it's not a London thing or a Manchester thing or a France thing. It's, it's a people thing. We're all people, and... Kindness is kind of what makes things possible for lots of us in lots of different ways. And we should embrace it in everybody and not kind of grab it as a personal quality for ourselves. But I think it is, I mean, as Chris brought up, like, I think it'd be a good thing to take into schools, really. And we talked a lot about that this morning, about t teaching kids things, because 
I can, you know, as a, you know, I'll speak for myself, as a selfish teenager, you probably don't spend time being kind to strangers. I think maybe it's only as you get older that you realise the daily struggles that people have that you think that would be helpful if I helped them out with that or I've been in that situation. But when you're younger, you probably don't have the mental capacity to, to think so much about other people. Do you think? Is that unfair? Well, well, I think there are teenagers out there who do a wonderful, amazing, kind, loving thing. But yeah, but not every day or not every minute of the day. Sure, but, but no one does those things every day of every minute. We shouldn't be holding that kind of standard up to anybody because then no one will try to thought thinking, oh, I'll never be kind all the time. But teenagers maybe get a free pass on this one because being a teenager is quite a tricky thing in its own right. So maybe if we allow them to be a little bit grumpy through that process and know that when they pop out the other side, perhaps they'll be... Slightly less grumpy. Yeah, but, but Harriet was talking know. about hormonal grumpy yeah. teenagers, yeah. basically. Well, you don't I like anybody. Just when you're, no, no, no. I was just thinking when you're younger, perhaps you are less in touch with other people's needs. I think I was. Sure, sure. Well, listen, being young is all about growing up and learning and exploring how to be in the world. So maybe part of that is learning how to be kind to your fellow man. So maybe we give them a little bit more slack as we tend to for children who are learning things. Um, so there, was a, there was a great uh, project that I uh, uh, filmed uh, for, for BBC London Television uh, last year. Um, David Cameron, uh, after the London riots, one of the incentives uh, that he launched was to encourage teenagers to get involved in community projects. It all sounds a bit worthy, but more than 40,000 teenagers across the country signed up to it, most of them in London itself. Uh, and uh, that involved the shop, the furniture shop that burnt down mm -hmm. in Croydon during the London riots, actually educating uh, these teenagers about business and about commerce and about how to run a successful business. So the shop owner actually invited teenagers in. Yeah, exactly. But one of the one, one of the things that the one of the things that this project involved was 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 these kids then taking those business skills, that business know how that they learned at the shop, away with them, and thinking of a way of making money by being kind and using that money to invest in a community project. Wow. And fantastic. it was a fantastic incentive. And and they actually the the, the the business idea they came up with was to issue happy badges to unhappy people. Aww. Which sounds incredibly worthy but actually it worked because they're irritating two, it, if you're walking around and someone gives me a happy, happy badge. badge it's like when someone says cheer up love it might never happen you think like Ooh. well i don't know that i mean it, it's funny because two weeks after i filmed this it, they actually did it to me i got this badge planted on my chest with a smile on it saying cheer up um and, and it did kind of make me smile and it did make me laugh it was pretty harmless but just in a long-winded way, just going back to what Harriet w was saying, that's what I was trying to do. Do you think we, th this should be taken to another level and be perhaps become part of a curriculum, uh, the, the importance of just doing something nice once a day? I don't think it would hurt. You know, I, I think it's an important subject, and not only because it helps other people, but because it gives the perpetrator, as it were, the person doing the acts of kindness, an incredible lift and, and changes self-image and a whole kinds of positive things. But so it has an, it'll have an not? impact on society as well, won't it, on, on, on a whole? <laughs> Absolutely. I think, you know, the, the, the opinion about unkind, or kind, I think it's quite cool to be cynical in London. I think that's one thing, but mm -hmm. I think there's a difference between voicing cynicism and actually being kind when something presents itself and an opportunity when someone needs help. And I think, I guess, speaking as a Londoner, I'm quite into, you know, cynicism is, is kind of the vocabulary I use amongst my friends, but when it comes time when, when something's happening right in front of me, I'll jump in and get involved. And I think a lot of Londoners fit that mould, and we're not actually deserve the bad rep that some people in other parts of the country think we deserve. Well, it's good to have people like you out there. David, thank you very much for joining us. Keep up the good work of the Kindness if, Offensive. If you guys want to see people of all ages having fun, just go to thekindnessoffensive.com and we've got lots of videos of Londoners being kind to one another. It might cheer up your day. Thank you very much. <laughs> what?